Hello and welcome back to Langy TV and to Lawton Park. My name is Lockie Flanagan. Thanks to Jonathan Webb and Saxon Productions, I'll be taking you through the exciting NPL 2 Round 24 action that we have here at Lawton Park today. Underway here at Lawton Park. It's the new number 18, Wayne Wallace, getting us started early. Jans takes to Wayne Wallace. Shades of Max Etheridge there with the hold-up play, but it's an opportunity here for Wallace to fire the first time shot that comes off the post there. You wait until Jordan Templeton's taken this long throw that's fallen to Wayne Wallace. Now it's back with Jordan Templeton. Goulding on the edge of the area, opening up the angle for the shot, but it's fumbled by Kostadinovsky. Is it in the back of the net? The referee says no. Stoilovic going down in the middle of the park there. Winning the free kick and it's sent forward towards Johnny Bird who brings it down nicely. He's got two skin hits chasing him but eventually it falls to Max Etheridge. Johnny Bird with another opportunity for the strike but it's cleared there. Blocked well by the Langwan. That was a deft little lob over Demir Stoilovic. Hasn't been the best 30 seconds of his life as Lissandro Paz fires one in, but once again, the ball into the area is nowhere near the men in the middle. Butler plays back to Tyler James. The first time shot is fired into the top left-hand corner of the goal for Werribee City. I touched on what an important game this is for them. Haven't been playing to their absolute capacity today. Haven't been playing to their utmost. But sometimes when you're a top team, it doesn't matter. You need that spark. David Sturton, and he's going to come on in place of Jane Madaffrey, who seems over there on the left-hand side might have picked himself up an unfortunate injury. Northern League of New Zealand. He was viewed as one of the uh, league's best defenders over there. Certainly rung true today, and now... Burgess gets a chance to send one in early. It's flicked across and it's into the back of the net thanks to an own goal there from the Werribee City defence. Luke Burgess, he doesn't score directly, but he is crucial, well and truly crucial in helping to get Lang Warren an equaliser and get themselves back into this game. Both sides looking for a winner. Here's Max Etheridge. There was the run of Johnny Baird there on that far side, but it just got past him. Dave Sturton getting around Nicholas Babka. And now the ball falls to Jordan Temple. It's flicked overhead and it looks to have brought down a player there. I believe that was Julien Collette. He did bring down Jordan Temple there as he looked to play the ball in over the top to Dave Sturton. And as though Dave Sturton will hit this one. And he does hit it off the post and into the back of the net. The super sub, Dave Sturton, coming off the bench for the third time in as many weeks. And once again, in front of a home crowd, getting a crucial goal to put Lang Warren ahead in this contest. One goal on 69 minutes and another goal in the second to make this game a very, very interesting one for Werribee City and a very, very exciting one for the home fans here at Lawton Park. Blink of an eye, Lang Warren 2, Werribee City 1. Sent in by Paz, looking for a head, and it does find a head, and it does find the back of the net there. I believe it's Alec Goodwin, the number nine for Werribee City. Hasn't been his best performance today. It hasn't been Werribee City's best performance today, but when you're a team up the top of the table and you're chasing promotion, you do need those magic moments, those moments that come out of nowhere. Ball sent in first time is headed away by Luke Burgess, who's been, has to be said, extremely impressive since he's come off the bench. But perhaps the shot falling for Alec, it's right to the back of the net. Now it's a chance and it's saved strongly there by Fraser McLaren. Just making up for that earlier one, the cross, the ball into the box. It just evaded him and ended up with that second goal. Definitely doing his best effort to make up for it with a strong save there from Jacob Butler. The ball just sort of bobbling around there. Things happening so quickly, but the end result is a corner for Werribee. It's hung out towards his back stick, looking for Carlin Feely. And now it's Butler with another chance. 
and it flashes just past the face of the goal there. The free kick is awarded to the home side. One last roll of the dice, perhaps, for Lang Warren to find a winner, and the ball comes to the edge of the area for Johnny Baird, and he's put it into the back of the net! Can you believe that from Johnny Baird? It hasn't been his day up to this point, but boy, oh boy, is it his game now. Deciding the game with an absolute thunderbolt into the right-hand side of the goal. A long ball sent forward there by Fraser McLaren. It looked with 20 seconds left of regulation stoppage time to be played. It seemed as though that was that. But then the ball flicking out onto the backhand side. Samuel McCall falling asleep with the wheel there. And the bouncing ball falling to Johnny Baird, who lashes it home on the half volley to give the final last attack of this game for Werribee City, notwithstanding a momentous win here for Lang Warren Soccer Club. Well. See how much time. In fact, there's no time. There's no more time for Werribee City to get an equalizer in this game because Johnny Baird has won the game for Lang Warren with the last, almost the last kick of the game there. It was a slow, a little bit, a little bit ugly start in the first half. Not a lot of chances being had by either side. But in the second half, things well and truly exploding into life. Both teams having attacking chances early in the first half. From a, from a tactical viewpoint, Scott, yeah. how, what was your assessment of that game? Do you know what? It's funny. Today, I just love football. It sounds really odd. I mean, I, I kept on looking at the players and just watching them and enjoying the, the style in which they delivered today. And I was so happy for them. The quality was brilliant. Um, some of the play in the first half, uh, the link-up play was great. And, uh, and as we hear the song behind us now, the, the dressing rooms are buzzing as well. But um, we've had a fantastic six weeks now. We haven't lost in, uh, in six weeks. And I'm just really enjoying working with this group of players. They're, they're taking on the information on. They understand the responsibility. And it's, it's awesome to see, I must admit, it's just quality. And, you know, we have had in the past, earlier in the season, a couple of games like these where things have been close and we're playing well and arguably playing as the better side in, you know, competitive fixtures against good teams and the result hasn't always gone our way. Do you feel like it's a vindication and, a, you know, a result, a result of your hard work today to, to finally see that going the right way today? You know, it's one of those ones you always talk about that, you know, it will balance it out throughout the course of the season and potentially it is, however... Um, we're, we haven't stopped yet and we're enjoying our football. I think you can just sense from the atmosphere in the dressing room and around the club uh, to put on performances like that in a, such a freedom uh, and the manner they delivered today, I, I don't think we're looking back at all. Um, I, I just see a, a sense of enjoyment from everyone, from coaching staff to players and, um, and that's a great feeling as a coach. When you've got a dressing room feeling and you've got that sense, it's just awesome. And there are so many uh, positives to, to, to pick apart from not just today, but from the last six weeks. But do you think that freedom is perhaps the, the uh, top of the pops, the chief amongst them, would you say? I used to like that, uh, that show, by the way, Top of the Pops. It takes me back to my time in England. But um, I first saw the Spice Girls on Top of the Pops, actually. <laughs> that was my first sighting of, uh, of Scary Spice. I turned it off. But, um, yeah, potentially. 
Um, but I think more importantly, it's down to consistency. Um, we train throughout the week with that level and standard, and I'm seeing a fit side as well. I'm seeing a real strong, physically competitive side, and uh, and you can look at fitness so many ways. You can look at availability, and uh, and today we had a full bench and a few boys playing in the twenties as well, and and that's that's a compliment to everyone involved in the preparation. Um, but the intensity in which we're playing consistently for 90 minutes is, is awesome to see and, and thoroughly enjoyable. And just finally for you, Scott, I just saw a video just moments before we went to air of uh, Eddie and the boys pumping out the, uh, the club song. How good is it for you as a, a coach to be involved at a club, you know, where there's such a high level of, you know, culture and, and passion and it means clearly so much? Yeah, it means a lot and um, I worry for Eddie. When he hits those high notes, I... Uh, I'm concerned, but I'm glad we've got a paramedic on site. But uh, I know I'm getting old as well because I seem to have a bit of a blackout when I hit the high notes as well. So I think the blood pressure's going through the roof. But um, it's a great mascot we've got. You know, he's been here over 30 or 40 years and he knows the song very well. And hopefully he keeps singing it um, for the remaining four, four rounds. Hopefully he sings it many, many more times.